Oh, recently I published some photos using a vintage effect achieved through Photoshop Adobe Camera Raw. Um, after posting about it on the forums at my fine picks, I was asked for my settings because they're on several screens. I thought screenshot was a little bit overly complicated and would take up too much space. So I thought I'd just put together this little video to show you what the settings are uh, that I've used. Um, they will need tweaking for individual photos, but I do have a preset saved in camera roll. So, I won't labour the point of the settings, but this is a video so you can easily pause it if you wish. So we'll take this photo, which was part of the original set, and open it in camera roll. Uh, this is the presets tab where you can save your settings for anything. Um, but before I lose the, load the presets on, I'm going to crop this image down because there's lots of stuff in it I simply don't want. There we go. Why people don't crop and edit their images in camera raw rather than going directly for into Photoshop, I'll never really understand. The preset here is called Vintage Stu and James. It's basically because Stu and James were in the first photo I uh, saved the settings from. So I'll just double click it and it loads the settings. But you see, we've got some uh, loss here overexposure, underexposure. So we will have to tweak the settings a little bit for this photo. So to get rid of this and restore a little bit of the detail, we'll just pull the fill light up until we can't see any more purple highlighting and to lose this you could reduce the exposure but I don't really want to do that I would rather increase the recovery now I'm quite happy to accept that little bit of blow out there um, now another setting that is regularly tweaked on actually we should just cycle through the settings first um, we look at the curves, set a strong contrast, and you can see roughly the position set here. Just hovering them so you can see the numbers again. If you want to copy the exact settings, then pause it. Nothing's been adjusted in parametric, just left as it is. Sharpening again, these are just my standard default settings. Haven't touched them in any way. Nothing gets changed on the hue, saturation, or luminous. Look at the split tone we do because we want to give it a little bit of a colour tint. So we choose an orangey colour uh, which is 60, 40 for the highlights for the saturation level. You can see the effective taking up and down just gives it the aged look. Um, leave the balance as it is. Go for a cooler effect for the shadows and again 40 for the saturation. You could reverse those colours but it gives a very different look. Much, much more faded. Um, a similar sort of effect. No adjustments on the profile or the manual. I've got the lens vignetting set to plus 7.5 and a 75 midpoint. But this is the one that I actually use, the special effect of uh, the vignetting, vignetting? I'm never sure how to pronounce it. And depending on the subject matter, you might want to increase this. So take it down to minus 75, it's about as far as I ever really go. Probably feels a little bit harsh. Even more so when you reduce the midpoint. Which I normally take about 50 if I really want to darken the image. But I thought minus 35 and a 75 midpoint was okay for that image. Actually, maybe ever so slightly darker. You can see the darkening coming around the corners as you reduce the midpoint. Okay, nothing changed on the camera calibration 
Which is the presets there. If you happen to like that preset, you could click there and save it. Um, on here, we have obviously I've tweaked the recovery fill light. Um, you might need to tweak the blacks as well from shot to shot. But generally, the brightness is kept at about plus 53, contrasted plus 18. Um, if you need to tweak it, it would normally be to increase the brightness and reduce the contrast to achieve the same effect. Um, clarity plus 25, vibrance plus 28, saturation minus 8. Saturation is one that I do play around with a little bit to try and uh, achieve the output that I want. But minus 8 is generally where I sort of sit to give that sort of cool effect. So there we go. I can't quite remember what I've adjusted and what I haven't, so I'll return to the preset. Go to here. Up the fill light until the purple disappears. Take the recovery up a little bit. I'm still happy to let that blow out a bit. If the exposure is. The lens. It could stand to be a little bit darker, but rather than doing that and bringing a whole darkness to the image, personal preference would be to take that down to a midpoint of about 45, 40, 40 will do. And then we are done. So if I flick over to bridge, you can see the, no, to bridge it, you can see the original image there. Um, sorry, not the original image, the processed image. Um, the raw file, of course, hasn't actually been affected in any way, shape, or form. You can just click on develop settings and clear the settings, and we can see what the image looked like before we started. And Photoshop is just about open now, which will show us the image afterwards. I hope that's been helpful. Sorry if I've drawn on. Really didn't have the time to sit and edit. Thank you. And there we have the final processed image. Probably not exactly the same as the one I used on the website, but close enough for this purpose. Bye bye.